Hey everyone, it's Tawny with Horse Plus. Thanks for joining. Um, I am waiting for Carrie to hop on here. Um, she she was all ready to go and she's like, oh, the internet crashed. So we're gonna give her just a little bit to try to hop on. Um, and um, we have a topic that we wanna talk about and it's something that is pretty important. Um, and I've been a little hesitant to try this program and Carrie has uh, been a pioneer in um, trying out this program. So we're gonna see if we can get her on here. Um, she she was ready to go and the internet crashed. So uh, she is not here with me in the studio. She's actually me logging on and we'll be both be talking from Colorado. She'll be from Colorado, I'm here in Tennessee. Um, so we have a good morning from Sydney, Australia. Well, yeah, good afternoon from the United States. Um, let's see, um, you're welcome to hop on and ask questions um, while well, we've got this going on. Um, but, you know, I think Jason is um, going to probably have to get her, um, oh, hold on, let's see. Do we have her trying to come in here? Um, I think Jason's going to have to go ahead and get her on an iPad. And we'll see if we can bring her in that way. Um, so I don't see that she's joining just yet. I've got some little noise happening, but I'm not sure if that's her. Um, Jason, you want to see if you can get her on the iPad? We got a hello from Billings, Montana. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be getting into this topic here real soon. Um, I'm going to see if she can get over here over to here. join. How do you want it? Um, like, just FaceTime her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Jason's getting uh, set up with Carrie because um, she was having issues and doesn't look like she'll be able to join in this video. Um, but we're gonna get her in an iPad, and I'll just I'll just hold her over here, and we'll we'll both talk, and 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 we'll make this work. Um, so let's see here if it's gonna hop on here. I always watch these live videos where the person's like sitting here just talking and nothing's happening and now that's what I'm doing so I'm like, <laughs> oh dear. Um, anyways, we are going to start uh, rolling here as soon as it says she's active so we just need to get her onto the iPad. Um, should be through Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. I'm find Carrie on there. Um, Had some little noise pop up there, but I think those are comments maybe. Hello from California. Um, and Virginia. It looks like we got Massachusetts. Well, everyone's joining and hopping on. Uh, we will be jumping into this uh, pretty soon. We're just waiting to get Carrie on, on board and having a little bit of technical difficulties, but... Um, let me see if I can get her to join this way and then we can start and then Jason can get her on a larger platform here in a little bit. Okay. Or her internet completely died. They're having crazy winds out there and I'm going to have to solo this. Um. Hey. Um, I am going to uh, put you on with my phone. Um, like, like so until we get the iPad, uh, rolling. So really apologize for the technical difficulties here, but, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna do our best here. So hold on. Let me, let me get, uh, sorry, where she's bigger. Okay. okay. Let me, let me close down. <laughs> okay. So this is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You know what, Carrie, we're going to call you on a different platform and then, uh, answer that one and then we'll join you in okay poor Carrie well we'll get her on here this will be much much nicer okay can we see you on there 
Carrie, are you are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, all right. This is a little bit different. We've never done this before. Um, and the, Hang it's on, a, let me figure out which one I need to be on. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, the, let me close the other video. Okay. And I hope I don't drop you. That would be bad. <laughs> All right. So, eh, that really messed it up, Jason. Well, it I can't. Just out on her face. Like, it's really it's whited out now. Jason, it's okay. There, there we go. That's better. It messed with it. Okay. All right. So Jason's got the lighting down and now we have got Carrie and we're all live. And how is the, the wind levels out there in case we lose you with your internet dropping just so people are aware of what you're dealing with? Um, so actually, uh, we are getting a brief reprieve. I think that we're sitting right around 15 or 20 right now, which is about half of what we've been dealing with this week. So hopefully it'll hang on here for a little bit. So, um, why we are doing this, oh dear, there's a feedback. Um, I might have to try to mute you. Anyway, sorry for all the technical difficulties. Nobody said the horse rescuers were extremely technically uh, advanced. Um, so, what we wanted to talk about is, oh, somebody's wondering how you're feeling. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that, because uh, everyone's seen you on the horse rescue episodes and uh, so how are you feeling before we jump into this oh so i have huge news in that regard um i am now completely released from all treatments and i have completed my final surgery and i am now on just maintenance as far as going in and getting scans and checks to be sure that everything is good i am in the all clear, I am 100% cancer free at this moment. Ah, that's such great news. Um, you and as you can see, the hair's, the hair's coming back quite a bit. <laughs> nice, nice. So as I'm talking, you might need to mute me maybe. I'm not sure. We just got to make sure the feedback doesn't happen. Um, so the whole point of this live uh, video and this conversation that we wanted to have is Carrie came up with a program years ago and we were doing a one day open door shelter and that was the first time I had encountered it and it was a buyout program. And it's designed to be a safety net for those horses whose owners want money for them. And as long as there is a slaughter price um, on horses, they can take them to auctions and they can get that slaughter price for them. So Carrie came up with an idea for a buyout program to basically try to make it easier for people to do the right decision. And so I believe it was like the first 25 horses that were going to be surrendered at the event, you would, you would pay $100 per horse to, for their owner to surrender them just to keep them from getting yes. shipped to, to, you know, to an auction and then on to, um, on to slaughter. And so through, yes, and oh, go ahead. We even set up right across from the sale barn. Um, the day that we did that event, we were set up in the parking lot across from our local sale barn. Yeah. So it was right across the street. And um, I, I was going into it kind of hesitantly. I'm like, I don't know what this whole buyout program's like. I don't know if this is a good, um, a good thing. Oh, we just want to give a shout out to Daisy from Switzerland. She just sent a thousand stars. So thank you, Daisy. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so I was kind of hesitant about this program. I could see the good in it, but I was like, man, I don't know how many people, I mean, people are going to be upset when uh, we run out of money, like first 25 horses. And what I found that day is the people that brought horses in that took the money were people that would, they would have taken the horse to auction. Um, it was it was a desperate situation basically um and i know when we were talking about this program earlier you were telling about um somebody who took advantage of the program and like she was going to use the money to buy groceries like it's kind of reaching a different group of people who don't have um the options or the financial means or they don't care and they want money for their horse. Um, so maybe I've, I've done some talking here, Carrie. Why don't you talk about this program and, and how it all started with you 
and how you're wanting this program to grow across the United States. All right, so uh, we started this program at a time when um, sale barn prices were low. They were not paying a lot of money for horses and we saw a lot of horses going to auction and after we would buy them, their owners would reach out to us and say, oh, we're so glad that you took our horse in. We didn't have any other option but to take it to auction. You know, we didn't know what else to do or people who, you know, they had an eviction or had some horrible life circumstance where the horse had to go immediately. Not a time when they can, you know, list the horse for sale, try to find a good home, any of those things. And we had just an overwhelming number of people that were reaching out saying, we need a better option. We need something else besides just taking them to auction that can happen quickly. And with many rescue organizations, there's a waiting list. With many rescue organizations, um, you know, there may be a, a surrender fee or, uh, you know, other fees associated that they can't cover. And when you're in a situation where you are going to feed your children or your horse, your children need to come first. I mean, a lot of people say, well, I would starve to feed my horse. Well, that's only realistic to a certain point. And then at that point, you need to realize that. Um, if you are in continued financial hardship, you might need to be looking at other options for your horse. And that's where the program all started. And we started with a um, $100 buyout and covering brand inspection. We are here in the state of Colorado where we have brand inspections. So it was approximately $140 a horse that we were paying. And we made sure to let everyone know that it was a no questions asked buyout program that we were not going in to judge you for the condition of your horse, for the condition of your facility, for where you were living, any of those things. We are merely here to help the horse and to help the family by taking off the pressure of having this extra huge feed bill. So our entire plan was helping people who needed immediate help with their horses. We are very proud in the fact that generally when we have a buyout request, after the brand inspection is done, we can usually pick the horse up the same week anywhere in the state of Colorado. So it's a great program. Um, it's like your, your dogs are joining in on it. It's a great program yes. Um, yes, that, that, you know, Carrie's been doing. Um, and then um, now you were winner of the Full Circle Life grant. Um, couple years back yes. right when you're struggling with cancer and all of that um and then right Kate, when that first started yes yeah. yes and that was that was something else um but you're through it so praise the lord um when um carrie or well actually when kt won the full circle life grant last year you've been working with her a lot and she chose you as her personal mentor um and now she's starting the buyout program. Yeah, she was very impressed with our buyout program. And first of all, I have to say not only hi to KT, but hi to baby Griffin. I don't Aww. know if anybody followed KT through her adventure mm. and her horrible loss last year, but she just gave birth to a very happy, healthy, bouncing baby. And we are so, so pleased to hear that. So hi to KT and hi to baby Griffin too. Yes, so yes. anyway. KT and, and the was, schlepper, um, her wonderful husband. That's the yes, schlepper. And, the schlepper. <laughs> and her and her schlepper. Yes. That was probably the best terminology for a horse husband I've ever heard. So <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we, we really, want to see this program go other places. We've had such big success with it. And KT was all about it. And she found a couple of people who are interested in sponsoring her program there. And we sent over as much as we could as far as literature and information on what we do with our buyout program. And she has started her own fledgling buyout program and they have already taken in buyout horses. And, you know, the need is huge. I don't care what state you're in or what part of the country you're in. There is a need for this program because there are some people that just because of their position financially or, you know, like I say, we don't judge whatever the reason is, they cannot hang on to this horse, but giving it away um, or waiting for a rescue, you know, to have space or 
you know, whatever the other costs may be, sometimes they can't even afford the euthanasia. So they're wanting to do a buyout and hoping, you know, that somebody might be able to cover cost of euthanasia on their horse. And that's, and that's, what, that's the point. Yeah. That's one thing that we see at auctions all the time. And in 2008, when we first did the free euthanasia clinics, it was because I was seeing so many horses in horrific conditions at auctions. And I wanted to provide a different option for them, a humane option. And that's when we started the free euthanasia clinics uh, back 2008. And it had never been done before. And I was like, you know what, this is the right thing to do. And I don't, you know, this might be the end of the organization, but I'm going to do it because this is what needs to happen. Uh, it, seeing horses, especially old horses, go to auctions that their owners needed to give them the last act of kindness would have, you know, would have saved them so much suffering. Um, and then here in Tennessee, we have a unique situation and we had a drought uh, last year. Now, I know from Colorado, it probably didn't seem like, you know, there would be a drought here, but it's always green and lush looking. But the grass stopped growing last summer and hay is very, very hard to find here right now. And there was a little pony that came in yesterday that was colicking, severe colic. And the owners just loved the little pony to death, but it was colicking and they had taken it to vets and they, like, they brought it to us as a last, last ditch effort. And unfortunately we weren't able to to fix that pony because the colic was so severe uh dr nancy ended up doing a necropsy and the pony had like this black gritty stuff in its colon and um i ended up calling the owner back who surrendered the pony and i said you know it's got some black gritty stuff and she's like you know what that's from the hay that i'm buying right now it's imported into tennessee i just can't find other hay and so now she's she's up a creek because her own horses that she has still you know they they could be at risk of this um so you take oh, yeah. you take her and she's she's able to you know still provide options now she knows she needs to get different hay but there are people out there that can't afford the hay and we're seeing a lot of horses at auctions that you know could benefit from this program that could never have even ended up at an auction and I know you can talk about this too, but I'll just, I'll talk a little bit about it and you can talk about your experiences. When a horse goes to auction, um, they are immediately subjected to a horrific host of nasty horse diseases and sicknesses. And it's, um, you know, we've seen a lot too. And if you want to talk about that too, Carrie, of what you've seen at auctions and why this program's good to prevent horses from even ending up there in the first place. Yeah, so when you've got someone that, you know, that even kind of cares about their horse, it's horrific to think of that animal going through an auction. This is a horse that's known love, that's known care. And then the auction, I can't picture a more stressful situation for an animal. It's being moved. Rarely are they led. They're usually, you know, pushed around by um, workers at the auction, you know, moved pen to pen. Um, they're handled sometimes well and sometimes not at auctions, you know, depending on the employees that are there, but they're herded into pens, sometimes with strange horses. Um, there's tons of sights and smells and people coming by and looking at you and poking and prodding you. And because there's so many horses coming from so many places, disease is just rampant at these locations. And it's very difficult to think what a horse must be going through when they were just happy at home in the pasture that morning and then that afternoon, they're at this horrible auction barn that's got all these crazy smells. Most auction barns sell all kinds of animals. So, I mean, they're gonna be smelling, um, you know, cows and pigs and all sorts of, of things that they might not have ever smelled before. And they're going through pens that are not always built for horses. And if they are built for horses, some of them aren't built very well. Some of them have, you know, real junky hay out in the pen. Some of them don't have any hay at all. And so this horse is going through this horrible, stressful situation um, just to be run through a ring where everyone is staring at you and people are bidding on you and deciding what your life is worth. Yeah, and it all comes yeah. down to the slaughter, slaughter price. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we just want to thank Beth for sending in her 200 stars a little bit ago. Thank you, Beth. Um, so we have decided that we want to pilot, um, this program here at our facility, just because with the 
you know, the economy and the, you know, potential recession coming on, you know, I know rescues across the United States are filling it. Um, and one thing that we are like, you have a private, do several private donors that are helping fund this and KT has got some sponsors, but, um, we're going to need sponsors to get this program up and going because we are an open admission shelter. And if we say we are opening it up to purchasing horses, um, and the, the idea would be to purchase them for $200 a horse, uh, $75 for donkeys. And that way it would, it would keep them hopefully from going to auctions or providing another option uh, for people. So I'm going to have, um, Rebecca post up the link, um, that goes to our website. Um, and let's see, we got Kim donated, uh, 500 stars and so did Tina. Tina did 530. Thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, so what are some of the challenges that you've run into with the, pro with this program? Um, and you know, things that we might need to know about that we can, um, learn from issues that you've ran into. Oh, we got another 500 and, um, 30 stars there. Okay. It looks like the link is up there. So basically in order for us to kick this off and we'll get back to you, uh, I just saw that link there and I got sidetracked you know how that is with me. I'm like going along and then something pops up and I'm like, Oh yeah. Um, anyways, we need to get sponsors of $25. Um, that's not very much, but if we all come together, um, and donate, you know, $25 a month, that will give us the ability to count on that money coming in on a monthly basis to purchase horses through a buyout program. So were you just swamped, Carrie, when you opened up the program? Like, what are we, you know, so the goal would be that we open this up in May. Um, so when you started this, were you just swamped with uh, a whole lot of horses all, all at once, uh, people wanting you to bring them in? You know, I was actually surprised at the number of people that contacted us um, that were needing to surrender their horse and then, you know, through one means or another, um, they decided not to take the buyout, but the actual numbers in the beginning were insane. Uh, I would say that first month we had um, 50 requests or so, yeah. and I believe that we ended up with 30 some horses as part of our buyout program. And it was kind of shocking to see all of the different types of people that were surrendering the horses because it, it always seemed to be um, people who were either, you know, unable to afford the horse financially or someone who just needed to get rid of a horse and figure taking a hundred bucks and not having to lift a finger for it was better than having to haul it to the auction and, you know, deal with it. Uh, I was, like I say, so I was really surprised at the number of contacts that we made. Um, and these people that, you know, ended up needing to surrender horses and did take the buyout. So many of them were in just such financial constraints and, and horrible financial situations. I mean, they couldn't afford anything going forward and they had done everything they could for the horses we had people who were using their food stamp cards to buy vegetables to feed their horses we had um one woman who asked if we could buy her a grocery gift card instead of giving her the hundred dollars so that she could use the money on groceries because she was concerned her husband was going to use the money elsewhere if it was paid you know to their checking account um the number of people who really truly needed it, like I say, surprised me. And it made me think of just how many people are having to take their horses to the sale barn that really don't understand exactly how the slaughter pipeline works. And the buyout saved so many horses from the slaughter pipeline, regardless what the end was, you know, like I say, some of them needed euthanasia, some of them didn't. But just knowing that those horses were saved, the horrors of a sale barn, the horrors of, you know, going to a feedlot, the horrors of a ride in a truck to Mexico, any of those things. And all of these owners, so many of them, when we went there, said, well, we're just really glad that you took this option instead of taking your horse to auction because bad things happen at auctions. And they would just look puzzled. So many people don't know what really happens at horse auctions. 
um, our horse auction is today. In fact, that's why you keep hearing my phone beeping in the background is updates on our own auction here locally. Yeah, so um, oh, it always does that little echoey thing at first. Um, so the goal is that we will get um, two, I think it's 200 sponsors at the $25 um, a month just to help cover expenses when these horses come in. Now we do have a full-time veterinarian, but you know, she is on, on salary and we have to pay her. We have to pay, you know, the drugs that the horses need. Um, there's just a lot of expenses involved with bringing a horse into your organization. And I know you know this well, uh, that we, we struggle Absolutely. with as rescuers. It's, it's real easy when we're bringing the horse in and there's a lot of action around the rescue, but then afterwards there's not a lot of excitement and donations to help. Um, and so I'm kind of asking our, our donors and, and followers to, you know, put your foot out just a little bit, sign up. There'll be a link. Um, Rebecca will be posting the link again to our, our page there. Um, click on that, become a, a sponsor of this program. Um, because it's gonna now who do we have entering the uh, entering the camera <laughs> yeah. when you've got cats they have to see what you're doing there's just, just it there's just nothing you can do about it <laughs> wanted the the three seconds of fame there <laughs> um, so as long as we are getting in these these um, these sponsors I see no reason why we can't open this program up and and hit it hard and help a lot of horses and hopefully see less horses in critical conditions, you know, at auctions. Have you seen any impact uh, with all the, the buyouts that you've done as far as them, I mean, not going to auctions? I know people seemed oblivious that, you know, horses were going to slaughter and stuff, but what type of impact have you seen? Here locally, we saw a huge impact, particularly at our local sale barn. Um, you know, a lot of our impact was reasonably close to home. I imagine that was because we had some news coverage and some paper coverage and stuff like that here locally with our hometown, uh, you know, news uh, media. But it was really kind of surprising the number of horses that we started seeing at the sale barn, um, you know, as, as far as the decrease. I mean, just within the start of our buyout program, um, we even, you know, without asking too many questions, asked how many of these people were considering, you know, taking a horse to the local auction here before we picked it up. And nearly every single one of them was considering taking the horse yeah. to their local auction because they just need, uh, you know, rid of the horse and they needed whatever money that they could get for it. And they just needed to go on about their day. And I would say that, you know, probably 75% of the horses that we saw that we paid for through the buyout program uh, were horses that we absolutely would have seen at our local sale barn. Yeah, and one thing that um, a lot of people don't realize is how many horses are being shipped to slaughter. And this year, sadly, it's higher than it was at the same time last year. Um, you know, there's a lot of horses being shipped to slaughter right now. So if we can help, uh, we want to help them. So I see um, one organization commented here, and they said that they came across um, a lady feeding pies from a bakery dumpster to their horse um, and you know people do desperate things when financially they can't make it and they have a horse um, I know there was absolutely we have we have a gal here locally that goes to the bakery and picks up day old bread and that's all their horses have eaten in, in months is day old bread yeah I was working with one district attorney and he's like they're feeding the horse bread and that's all the horse is eating and you know it's 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 rough but we as rescuers have to look at these situations and try to figure out how we can make a difference and um you know i know there's a lot of controversial issues with purchasing an animal um and some people are like well you're not rescuing it if you're purchasing it um and pet finder even banned us from posting animals because it goes against their policy if a you purchase an animal um and i totally get why they made that policy because you know if you have a a dog uh breeder selling you 
cute puppies to put on your ad adoptable pet finder page, that's, that's a problem. But when you have animals that have a slaughter price on their head and you can save them and give them a second chance by paying that slaughter price, um, until slaughter's not an issue, it's going to be a necessity to buy horses to keep them from from dying is just a horrific, horrific death at, at a slaughterhouse or just the transport down there. They, a lot of them don't make it. Um, it's, it's just a rough, rough situation. Um, so, oh, absolutely. so what would you tell people as far as like supporting this program? Um, if you had an elevator speech of why somebody should, you know, become a sponsor and help us, um, you know, get this program off and, and running and hopefully a permanent program as long as slaughter's a, 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 an issue. Before I would even start with the elevator speech, I would say one of the biggest things that everyone needs to do, particularly in rescue, because rescue is, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a little um, vicious, for lack of a better word. There's, you know, there's a lot of rescues um, that will not like a program like this. And we have faced um, quite a bit of adversity over the program. So the very first thing that I would do with um, anybody when explaining this program is uh, we have taken a lot of flack for the fact that we have been very clear in that we do not pursue legal charges against owners who surrender horses regardless of their condition that is written on our flyer it is written on our website it is a very well known fact um, we are a no questions asked buyout i don't care if the horse is emaciated i don't care if the horse is injured i don't care if the horse is sick i don't care if the horse is dangerous we assist every horse this is this is a full circle program this isn't we're going to go and we're going to take the nice ones this isn't you know we're going to leave the skinny ones behind and then call the sheriff on you that's not what this program is about and we have even gone so far as having meetings with our local law enforcement and they have said that they really feel that this is an excellent resource for people who don't have options a lot of people fear, especially in Colorado, they do cull horses from the sale. They do pull horses from the sale and, and, you know, not allow them to sell if they're in a bad enough condition or if they're sick enough. And if you can't afford vet bills and you can't sell your horse at the sale barn and you don't have the ability to put the horse down, then what are your options? And this is giving someone who wants to do the right thing an option. And that is the number one reason that I support this program without involving law enforcement. All of our followers know we are really big on assisting local law enforcement. Um, we have worked with a lot of seizure cases. We've worked with a lot of um, forced owner surrenders, I guess you could say, and never have we taken any flack from law enforcement over the fact that we have not turned in someone who has surrendered or done a buyout on a horse that's in terrible conditions. And Honestly, I will continue to stand by this program that if somebody has a horse that they need to give up, like I say, I don't care what's wrong with it. That horse needs help. And if these people are in fear of retaliation, they're not going to seek help for that horse. So having a program where you know that you are not going to face any repercussions for having a sick, skinny, whatever horse, um, I think is really, really important in especially any community that has sale barns and slaughterhouses, you know, there's a horrible feedlot situation in Colorado and keeping the horses out of that is great. But like I say, when you've got owners that are in a situation where they have no other option for their horse, um, this gives them an outlet to do the right thing. And I would, like I say, that would be my number one soapbox stand about this. Um, because we do take a lot of flack, especially when we get horses that are body condition score ones, um, horses with horrible, horrible, untreated injuries. People say, why did you not call law enforcement? Well, if we start calling law enforcement, these people are going to stop surrendering these horses like this. And then these horses are just going to be left to suffer and languish. Law enforcement didn't know about them already. The chances that they would have found out about them before they died isn't good. Yeah, no, I can, I can totally see that, that aspect. Um, 
the one thing that we run into all the time is that a lot of times you can have a horrific horse case and law enforcement doesn't do anything. Um, if it does go to the court cases, it gets dismissed. Um, you know, there was a, a court case that happened here several years back and we, we held the horses for years and the lady ended up getting them back and we, we weren't reimbursed for feed and everything during those years. So it's, it's a broken system that we are in for horses and, and law enforcement. And I think we kind of just have to take this as the same situation as, you know, horse slaughter. It's a problem and there's really no solutions. So we have to take the best solutions possible. And that's getting the horses out of the slaughter pipeline. And then also getting these horses out of these horrific situations. Um, and, you know, everyone has to decide, you know, what the program looks like and, and stuff. But, you know, it's just in all the years of rescue, the actual amount of actual cases where somebody ended up in trouble um, for horse neglect are so small. I can practically, I think I can count them on one hand because there's just not good laws out there for horses. And that makes our jobs even more challenging. Agreed. So, um, Absolutely. I just wanted to give a shout out to Tina and Daisy. They both signed up to be $25 a month sponsors of this program. And hopefully Fabulous. we get a whole lot more. Um, it would be great if we could open this program um, before May, but that will all re kind of rely on our, our donors. I don't want to open up a program without having financial stability there uh, because rescuing the horse is the cheapest part of getting a horse uh, into a rescue. Absolutely. Like, I don't think most people understand, like you, you, you get it. And then, I mean, that was the cheap part and everything else is so expensive after that. And it just keeps piling up and adding up and it's, um, it's hard. So um, I know there's some great things ahead uh, this year. This is our 20th uh, anniversary year of rescuing horses. So we do have a open house scheduled for that. And we have, the whole full circle life um, things happening. So we've got a whole lot of exciting, uh, exciting things happening. But I think this program with the economy and the potential um, recession and the drought that we're experiencing here in Tennessee is, is um, something that this program's needed. And so I'm just, I'm asking you to please consider becoming a monthly sponsor of this program. Um, $25, I don't think you'll miss it. And I know the horses will really, you know, the difference it'll make for them is huge. And it's something that they would never miss if they can have a chance at life and, and support. So just want to thank you so much um, for your support. And I want to thank you, Carrie, for, um, you know, being there and, and doing all you do for horses. And, you know, I've been, I've been skeptical about this program. You know, from the time I heard about it and we did the one day open door shelter years ago and I was like, well, it seems to work. I mean, I was impressed that most people don't take the money and then that leaves money to help those horses whose owners will take the money. And the people that are taking the money, definitely those horses need out of there as fast as they can. And that money encouraged them to leave that horrible situation or encourage them not to take them to the auction. So... Uh, it's a great program that you've created, and I'm hopeful that we can get enough sponsors here and get this rolled out uh, by the beginning of May or sooner, and um, just keep up all your great work there in Colorado, and uh, and I'm glad you're doing so good and cancer-free. That's so exciting. Well, and we'll see you in May for sure. So yeah, you're 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 coming out. So there's a lot going on with Horse Rescue Heroes. We're not going to spill the beans too much, but um, definitely. Don't, don't, I'll just say we'll we'll be in the area in May. <laughs> hmm, I'll be in the area in May. So um, there's a lot going on, and I'll be excited to see you. And I'm so excited that you're doing so well. And again, please consider being a monthly supporter of this program. Um, the horses here in Tennessee need it and we want to provide it, but we don't want to open this program up and then have to start being like, sorry, we can't do this. 
um, because we are very much, if we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it and we need your support to make that happen. So thank you all so much for joining and thank you, Carrie, for being here on the iPad. <laughs> I like held you here for a long time and it, uh, it worked. <laughs> it worked. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Carrie, for being here and everyone's support. And please uh, click the link. Um, it's right there in the comments. Sign up. Let's get this program rolling and let's save some horses. Heck yeah.